Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with the next update for my big fat eyeshadow project. This is a massive project I'm doing this year to get more use out of my eyeshadow palettes and get to know them, eventually cool them down and ultimately just play around with them. So today I'm going to share with you the palettes that I've been working on over the past month. Um, I do have a couple different areas of this project. I do have a low buy or like a no buy for eyeshadow, a beauty bank. Um, I do have a one week one palette with three different palettes plus my product level up palette. I also have a project in here created by Dora um, called Expand Those Pants. So that's also a section of this video. So I'm going to cover all of that today. But before I jump into the video itself, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. Let's jump into the video. <laughs> So I'm going to start this video off with the no buy, the beauty bank, the eyeshadow bank that I am doing in this project. And this specific part of the project is very heavily inspired by Laura Force. Um, I will have her link down below. I love watching her videos um, and I love watching this project as well. I have done it very, very similar to her, but I have a couple different tweaks to the rules. But basically you earn points um, and for every 10 points earned, you can buy one eyeshadow. So that's the only way I can purchase eyeshadows this year is to earn points and buy them that way. I do have a couple of exceptions that if I do that anything as a gift, that is not... Can, I can go minus for gifts, uh, but I still have to count the points. Um, and if I buy something myself, I can't do that until I actually have the points in my bank. So anything that I receive... I'm not going to say no to, I'm going to take that in, but I'm going to go minus. And spoiler alert, we did the last month, so I'm now trying to catch up. So I'll let you know how I've done with that. Uh, but how I can earn points, I will go through as I go through the different categories. So first up um, in this category, we do have the no pan left behind category, which I have four completed palettes with. Um, and the four palettes that I have completed are actually the four that are in this project. So I'm not going to cover which ones those are. Um, if you watched my last video, you know which palettes I introduced. Uh, but those are the only four that I reached for no palette behind in the past month, which means that I earned four points in that category because I earned one point per each palette that I do no palette behind on. Next up, we have a category called 10 uses. So every time I reach one eyeshadow 10 times, I get one point. Um, and that continues up. So if I use a palette like 20 times, I get an additional point for every 10 uses on top of that. So like you know, ultimately 30s, for example, with each of three points, 50s with each of five points. But just every time I reach a 10th threshold, I add additional points in my bank. So I'm going to go through the ones that I have reached for 10 times briefly. I'm not going to show you the pants, but I'm going to mention which I chose I did do that for. And I have quite a lot to share in this category. So first up, we have the shade Cypress Umber from my Soft Glam Palette, which is my Panda Palette. I have reached for that one 10 times in my collection total. Then we have the Colourpop Single Press Glitter in Indio. I also used that one 10 times. We have the shade Burberry um, Rosewood. So that's like a um, single, it's called one of the sheer eyeshadows, I believe, in the shade Rosewood, which is the one shade I use in my eyebrows every day. And I reached for that one 30 times in the past month, or that's how many points I was able to get. So that's three points for that shadow. And I've actually used that shade 60 times in total this year. Uh, we have the shade Laguna, which is um, in the California Coast palette. And I've reached for that one 20 times. Um, so that is two more points for that shade. We have the um, Colourpop The Potter Single in Kaleidoscope, which was originally from the Dream Street palette. Uh, but I have it in my singles collection now. I reached for that one 10 times as well. We have the shade Laughter from Sydney Girl, which is one of their singles, and I reach for that one 10 times too. Um, same with the next one, I also reach for that one 10 times, and that is another single coming from Cleona in the shade Statue Garden. Um, we have another two shades from my Panda palette, which is a soft glam palette again. We have the shade Tempera, which I use 10 times for a total of 40. And I use the shade Sultry 20 times in the past month for a total of 30 uses this year. Um, then we have the shade Half Moon Bay, again from the California Coast Palette, and I've reached for that one 10 times. By the way, when I say like 10 times or 20 times, whatever, that is like the combined so score. So for example, I know the Sultry Eyeshadow, I reached for I think 15 times um, in the first month, so in January. So I had like 10 points for that in the first month, but the five uses that I hadn't hit the next threshold with rolled over to next month, and I reached for it 15 times again in February. 
hence like 20 users in February but just know that it's like not actually 20 users but I reached that threshold for 20 users in this month. Next up we actually have another two eyeshadows from my Panda palette. We had the shade uh, Rose Pink and Dusty Rose and I reached for both of those 10 times each. Um, we have the shade uh, Turbo Mielka from Glam Shop, which is one of their singles, and I reached for that one again 10 times for a total of 20 times this year. Uh, and we have three more shadows to go. We have the Fiona single in Translucency, which I also reached for 10 times. I have the Colourpop Super Shock shadow in Amaze, again 10 times. And lastly, we have the shade Lumino from the Mini Nude palette, again 10 times on that one. I actually had that one in my project, in this project last month in January. And I reached for it five times in that project and I reached for it five additional times this month so I could reach a 10 threshold. So those are all the points that I earned in that category. Again, a lot of numbers. Um, but in total, if you were counting, that is 20 points added to my collection, which is really, really good because that means two full eyeshadows from just uses this month, which again is great. Then the next category and actually the last one that I have points from this month we have pants and I hit seven pants in the past month um, uh, we have the shade Indio from Colourpop which is that pesky blue again we have the shade Kaleidoscope from Colourpop and um, which is that the powder shade from the Rizu palette we have Sienna from the Soft Glam palette we have Starburst from the Pastel Roses which is a single we have the shade Metallic Peach from uh, Stila which is like a depotted or like a potted kind of eyeshadow. Then we do have Laguna from a California Coast palette, hit pan on that one too. Uh, and lastly, we have the shade Vibes from my Stone Vibes palette. So those are all of the eyeshadows that I hit pan on, which is seven. So those are all the points that I earned this month, like I said. I do have one more category, which is finished eyeshadows, but again, I didn't hit any goals in that category, so not zero points for that. So if you add all of that up, um, that means that I have earned 31 points in total in the past month, which is great because that is three full eyeshadows plus one point. Uh, but I am still in the negative because as of the last update, I was at minus 143, uh, which is quite a lot. So I'm still working my way up. Um, and at this point with the 31 points added, I'm currently at minus 112. So hopefully I can catch up but that is kind of where I stand with my budget at the moment. So again, hopefully I can keep uh, getting more points next month. I'm gonna try next month to get even more points, maybe even 40 points, we'll see how it goes, uh, but that is kind of where I stand. So the next part of the video is gonna be the one week one palette. So I'm just gonna jump straight into it because I know this videos and always end up being super long. Um, and I'm gonna start with the first palette, which is actually my product level up palette, which is the California Coast from Sydney Grace. So this is the palette here. I'm gonna insert some swatches and uh, footage of the palette as I talk about it. But this is what the palette looks like. So it's a really, really beautiful palette. I really love the tones in here. It is more of a cool tone palette, but it's more of a kind of, it has like some pinkier undertones, which is something that I really enjoy. You can see what it looks like here. Um, yeah, I really do love this palette, but let me jump into the looks. So the first look that I have right here is um, all, basically all matte look. I really, really love how this one turned out. What I did is I took the shade La Yola Shores um, close to my lash line, like a smoky liner. Um, and then what I took next is the shade Malibu, which is like really deep brown. And I used that to blend that really almost black shade out. Um, and then to blend that even more, I took the shade Glass Beach, which is a bit of a warmer brown, a bit lighter as well than the last two. And again, slightly just blended it out. Um, and then lastly, in my crease, I ended up using the shade Laguna just to kind of create a little bit of depth in my crease. And that is the first look. I really, really love how this one turned out. I don't often go for all matte looks, but I just love how this one looked. For the two, I did a super easy look. I used the shade Glass Beach on my outer corner, which is like, a, again, that kind of deeper, warmer brown. Um, then again, I took the shade Laguna, which is this kind of beautiful, sandy, slightly pink leaning um, crease shade. I really, really love that shade. Um, and again, I put that in, in my blending area. And then all over my lid, I took the lightest shimmer in the palette, Half Moon Bay, and I just placed that all over the lid. And that was the second look. It was a really easy everyday look, but again, I really liked the tones in it, this um, eyeshadow look. Then for day three, I did more of a cool tone, almost taupey look. So I used the shade Butterfly Beach, which is a grey toned kind of crease shade, and I used that in my crease. Uh, then I took the shade La Yola Shores again, um, which is that really, really deep, almost black shade, and I smudged that against my lash line. 
And for the shimmers, I used the shade Caramel Beach, which is like a cool tone taupey shade on the outer and middle of the lid. Uh, and then to brighten the look up a little bit, I used that lightest shimmer again, Half Moon Bay, on the inner lid. So that is the third and final look for this palette. Um, and when it comes to the usage, I won't cover that in this video because I am doing my product level up for this palette. So I will share with you all of the progress and all of that kind of good stuff when I update this palette. But at least that's the looks. So before we move on to the next palette, I just want to cover the ranking of this specific palette and let you know what score I gave it. So I have four categories for rankings. I'm going to go through them all. Each uh, ranking can give five points max. So let's just go through them. So for Color Story, I gave this one a three, and my note says that this Color Story um, had a great variety of deep and light shades. And for Cool and Neutral palette, it's um, a stunning one and has some different undertones, which makes it quite unique to me. So that's why I gave this one a three for Color Story. For Versatility, I gave this one a three again. I put in the notes that you can get a big range of depth with this palette. There's also quite a variety of undertones, some rosier shades, some warmer, and some pure cool tones, those kind of taupey shades that I mentioned earlier. Um, however, the tones are still in the same family and the shimmers are quite similar in tone, um, so that's why it equaled a 3. For the quality of this palette, I gave it a 5. Um, my comment says that Sydney Grace has an amazing formula. The mattes are super pigmented and creamy and the shimmers are buttery, um, in fact, impactful and pigmented. The shimmers aren't super sparkly, um, but for metallic, they're some of the best. So again, five for that category. Um, and then lastly, for my personal ranking, I gave this one a four. And I said that I ended up loving this palette way more than I thought. I did an all MAC look, which I loved, which is the first look that I share with you. And I'm definitely a shimmery, sparkly girly. So it's very unusual for me to like all MAC looks. Um, it's not perfect, but I really do love this palette. The shimmers are probably the ones that let me down a little bit, just with the tones and the depth of them. So adding all of those points up together, this palette got 15 out of 20, which is really, really good. So that is where I'm going to wrap up with this palette. The second palette that I have to share with you is my Tasha Renona Love Palette. This palette looks like this, and it's a beautiful, uh, kind of pinky, purpley leaning palette. I'm always a little bit confused with this palette when I look at it. I'm just a little bit overwhelmed with what kind of looks to make with this palette. Um, so it was really fun to play around with it over the past month and I made some beautiful looks and of course I will share them with you. Uh, but yeah, you can see the swatches of this palette and what it looks like. So that is um, this palette itself. Also, this palette is the one that I had my expand those pans with this month because I only had one pan in this palette that I worked on and this is that one um, and that was the shade Commitment. Uh, which looks like this now. You can see the pre kind of usage in the footage. Uh, but yeah, this one I had a goal of using five times and I did use it five times. So I did complete that goal for this palette. But let me jump straight into the looks um, and we're going to start with this one right here. So for this look, I used the shade Heartbeat all over the crease and the blending out area. Um, then I used the shade first to clean everything up to make it more blended, which is just like a cream kind of shade. I used the shade Lifetime on the outer two thirds of my lid and the shade Transparent on the inner one third of my lid. Um, and then lastly, I used the shade Commitment kind of smudged along my low lash line. And that is the first look, which was a bit more of a kind of neutral look, which I really, really did enjoy. For day two, um, this was actually my Valentine's Day look and I really loved this one. It was a very pink toned look. So for this one, I used the shade Intense all over the crease and the lower lash line. And I blended that out with the shade Valentine, which is a lighter pink. Um, for the outer corner, I used the shade Heart, which is the true red in the palette. Um, and that's the matte with this look. And then I used the shade Giving all over my lid. And I felt like the disconnect was a little bit there between the, sh the shimmer shade and the outer corner shade. So I used the shade Passion um, kind of between those shades to blend it a little bit better. And, and that's all the shades that I used for the second look. For day three, I did this look right here, which is more of a purpley look. And I used the shade Trust on the outer corner. Then I took the shade Dream in my crease. Um, I used the shade Commitment again, and which was my focus shade, uh, to deepen everything up. Um, and then again, I used the shade first to kind of just blend everything and make it a bit more smooth. For the shimmers, I used the shade Pure Love on the outer lid. 
and then I used the shade Blind on the rest of my lid, which is a silver shade, and I really love how this one turned out. It's definitely a bit more cool toned, and of course very much purple leaning. So those are all of the looks for this palette. Let me quickly just go through the uh, uses on this one and let you know what I used. And I used everything once, apart from two shades actually, uh, which was the shade Thirst, which I used twice. That was the blending out shade. As well as commit one to which I use five times um, and again the rest of the palette I used once each. So that is Natasha Nona Love palette. Uh, let me go through the ranking for this one. So for color story I gave this one a two and I said it's pretty in theory and each individual shade is stunning. However I always feel overwhelmed with this palette and something just makes me not pull it out. For versatility I gave it a three. I said you can mainly get some more romantic looks either pink, rosy or purple. Uh, but there's a few more neutral shades. There's also a mix of cool tones and warm tones, which is why I gave it a three, because you can create some different looks, even though they do fall into that romantic um, kind of category. For quality, I gave it a three. I said some of these shadows are Natasha Nona's normal great quality, but there's also definitely some duds in this palette, so I couldn't give it any higher than three. For my person ranking, I also gave it a three, and I said I like the looks, but it's not a favorite. Um, again, something about it just makes me not reach for it, um, but I made some lovely looks, uh, but I'm also pretty happy to put it away. So that's kind of why it falls in the middle. And adding that up, this palette got 11 out of 20, which is actually some of the lowest out of the palettes that I've tried so far, but that's kind of expected. This one, I knew it wasn't a favorite in my collection, uh, but that is a Dina Tachin on a Love palette. So let's move on to the next one. And for the next palette, we have one of my Pat McGrath palettes. This one here is the Subliminal palette, which is the more cool tone palette. And um, you can see it rolling here. It is more of a kind of taupey cool tone palette with a couple pops of colors. It has like a warmer, almost um, white gold shade, as well as some more blue shades. And um, so that is this palette here. And um, it's a really, really pretty one. And let me go through the looks that I created. Um, the look for look one is actually one that I created in a Get Ready With Me, but I'll still go through it with you. Um, and in this one, I actually set the base when I, before I used eyeshadows, because I feel like I'm still playing around with setting the base for Pat McGrath, and I did it for this look. But for this look, I started using the shade Ultimate Taupe in the crease, which is the lighter shade. And then to just deepen that up, I put the shade Depth in the lower crease. For the lid, I used the shade Substance all over the lid. Um, and I topped that with the shade VR Violet, which is this beautiful, beautiful shimmer. Um, it's one of the special shades. And then I topped the inner third uh, lid with the shade Astral White, which is like a blue iridescent shade. And that was the first look. For day two, I did this really smoky blue look. And I used the shade Blue Blitz all over the lid, which again is one of the special shades. Um, and then I put the shade Extreme Black in the outer crease. Um, and then for the rest of the crease, I used the shape Depth, which is that kind of medium uh, deep shade. It's not the lightest one, uh, but the lightest one, Ultimate Taupe, I did end up using as a blending shade and on my lower lash line. And lastly, I used the shade Astro White again, which is that um, kind of iridescent blue on my inner corners. And that is the second look, which is more smoky, and I also wore this one in a video, by the way. For day three, which is actually one of my favorite looks, I believe, from this week, uh, we have this look right here. And again, I used the shade Ultimate Taupe in my crease and on my lower lash line. Um, and then for my lid, I put the shade Lilac Dusk all over the lid, which is like a satiny, cool-toned purple shade, like a taupey purple shade. It's really, really pretty. And then I top that specific shade with Pale Gold 002, which is this white gold shade. And, and I really, really love how that combination turned out. It's just such a stunning way to pair these shades. And I really love how that turned out. It was like a cool tone kind of shade with like a warmer shift. And I really, really liked it. And, and then I used the shade Skin Show Nude on my inner corner, which is the first shade in the palette. And that was day three. So those were all of the looks that I made with this palette. And again, I did do no pan left behind on this palette. Uh, but I did use a couple of shades more than one, so let's go through them. I used the shade Depth right here twice, the shade Ultimate Taupe three times, and the rest of the first row I used once, and then for the second row I used the shade Astral White twice, but the rest of them once. So that is all my usage for this palette for that specific week. So those were the looks and the usage, but again let's go through the ranking next. For color story, I gave it a two, and I said the color story is okay, but honestly quite boring looking at first glance. It's the penultimate gray taupe kind of cool tone palette with a pop of blue, so not the most exciting, um, so that's the two. 
For versatility, I gave it a 3, as that despite being a very cool tone palette at first glance, this palette has a lot more variety than you initially think. You can make very light to very deep looks, satins, um, you have sparkles, you have more neutral shades, you have more colourful shades. However, all of them are mostly cool toned, which is why I couldn't give it more than 3, because you can't get any really like pure warm toned looks from this palette, of course. For quality, I gave it a 4. I said that the Pat McGrath formula is one of the best, however, there are some shades in here that doesn't give me as much as I know a Pat McGrath palette can. Some of the special shades are not as sparkly as I would want, and one of the looks came out a tad bit patchy, which was the first look that I used in my Get Ready With Me. I mentioned that in that video, but yeah, it was just a little bit off, so that's kind of why it falls at 4, and I can't give it a 5. For the personal ranking, I gave it a 3. It's a really nice palette, and I like having it in, in my collection for whenever I want a really cool toned look, but it just isn't my vibe for every day, so I can't give it any more than three. Uh, so those were all the points, and if you add those together, I gave this palette a 12 out of 20. Then we have come to the final palette of the uh, month, and that is the palette um, that I have right here, which I've been using for this specific week, actually. Um, and this is the Corey Bible um, palette from Anastasia. Uh, and this one is a really, really nice palette. It has a row of cool tones on the top and a row of warm tones at the bottom. Um, yeah, so that is what the palette looks like itself. Uh, and let's start with look number one. So with look number one, I did a really warm tone, like, pinkier peach look. And I used the shade Stev um, kind of in my outer corner and I blended that out with the shade Cindy in my crease and I also added that to my lower lash line. For my lid I used the shade Aura which is this beautiful kind of pink to gold duochrome and I used that all over my lid. Um, and I also added the shade Bear to clean everything up and the shade Bowley on my inner corner. And that was the first look. For look number two, I took the shade Bible um, in my crease, which is a mauve kind of shade. Um, and then I took the shade Stev on all over my lid as a base. It's the same shade as I used in the first look. And I also used this one on my outer lower lash line, used to give a little bit of depth down there. Um, then for my lid, I took this shade Mandala, which is like a duochrome, like a purple to a pink duochrome. And I used that on the inner two thirds of my lid as well as on my middle of my lower lash line, and um, so that is the shade Mandala. And again, I used the shade Bowley for my inner corner and Bear as a cleanup shade, and that is the second look, which created this kind of warm red to purple kind of look, which is quite unique, and I really, really like that combination from this palette. It's a look that um, I didn't expect to get from this palette, because, you know, I, I didn't mix the warm tones and the cool tones, and again, I really like how that turned out. For day three, we actually have the look that I have on today. So I'm going to show you what that one looks like. I'm going to sit close and just um, read out the shades while I look at my phone so you can see what my shades look like. So I used the shade Boy on my crease, which is like deep brown. It's the last one on the top row. Um, and then I put the shade Jode on my outer corner, which is one of the kind of grayish taupes in this palette. Or like more like, I guess, gray gunmetal shades. Um, and then I put the shade Libra, which is the pure taupe, on the inner two-thirds of my lid. Um, and then I topped the very center of my lid with the shade OA, which is like a, the same gunmetal gun shade, but like with multicolor sparkles. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but there is a little bit of sparkle on it, the middle of my lid. And that is basically, look, I used the shade Bare again to clean everything up in the crease. And I also put a little bit of Boy on my lower lash line, used to put some depth down there. Um, and that is this look right here. So that is this look um, and for the three looks that I used, I used all of the shades apart from uh, three I believe, uh, but I did actually do a look with those um, a different day, I didn't film it again, but I did do a look using the shade Chai in my crease. I put the shade Moo I think, yeah, Moo in my, on my lid like all over and then this shade here called My Angels on my outer corner. So those three makes a really beautiful look too, just like a neutral everyday look. And um, I wanted to film, like use this one that I'm using today um, instead in this video because I knew that it was a little bit more out of my comfort zone and maybe a little bit more, I don't know, for me at least a different, a bit different than just like a warm toned golden um, eyeshadow look. So I didn't film that one, but I did do that look as well. Used to do no pen left behind on this palette, but that is all of the shades. Let me go through again how many times I used each shade. So I used the shade Bowley here twice and um, then the rest of the top row I used once. I used the shade Bear three times, um, and then I used the shade Stev right here twice, and the rest of the shades, again, I only used once. 
So that is the users on this palette. And lastly, let me also go ahead and rank this one. For work color story, I end up giving this one a three. I said it's an interesting color story for sure. And it's not too often you find such a clear divide between warm and cool tones. Um, there's almost two color stories in one, um, but they also work quite nicely together. So you can mix the warms and the cool tones. And it does kind of create some creativity. Um, so that is my points for color story. For versatility, I gave it a three. You can create some good amount of combinations from this palette. Warm looks, cool looks, gray looks, mauve looks, gold looks, and warm pink looks. There's a lot of options to mix and match as well. However, all looks do turn out on the neutral side. I'm actually thinking now, and I think I'm going to give this one a four for versatility instead, because the only thing you really can't get with this one is colorful looks. Uh, and I'm just thinking about my other ratings. For example, the uh, Subliminal palette also got three. And I feel like this is a bit more versatile because we do also have those warm tones. So I'm giving, giving it a four instead. Um, then for quality, I gave it a three. I said the quality is pretty on par with other Anastasia palettes. It's good, but it's nothing special. Um, and then lastly, for my personal ranking, I gave it a three. And I said, I do like this palette and I really enjoyed my week with it. However, it is not an all-time favorite palette um, and it falls somewhere in the middle for me, hence the free ranking. So those were all of the rankings for this palette. And if you add those up, um, I'm giving this palette a 13 out of 20 points, um, which is pretty good. Um, and that is also the final palette for this month. So before I show you the three palettes that I'm rolling in for the next round, um, just let me know which one was your favorite look for each palette. Um, yeah, do you have a clear favorite with each? I definitely do, um, and I kind of have covered that throughout. Uh, but yeah, let me know which ones were your favorite words too. So for the month of March, I do have three palettes in front of me that I'm going to roll in, plus the product level up palette, whichever one that is. Uh, right now is leaning towards having my California Coast palette again for a month, um, and if so, I obviously won't read it there again. If that happens, I'm obviously going to have to reevaluate it if I'm going to add in a fourth palette, but I will update you with that next month. Um, however, I'm going to introduce the three palettes that I'm using right now. So the first one is the Star Wars Mandalorian palette, which is a beautiful kind of neutral to green palette. I really, really love this one, and I think this one is going to be perfect for March. Um, it's more pastel, it also has those greens, so that is the first palette. Sticking with the greens, we're rolling in the Hella palette from uh, Odin's Eye and Angelica. Um, and I'm rolling this one in because I think it's the perfect March palette for St. Patrick's Day, but also beginning of spring. So that is the second palette. It's actually the newest palette in my collection. And this is a palette that put me into negative in my eyeshadow bank. But I'm excited to play around with this one. So, um, so that is the second one. Then for the third palette, I am going away from the greens a little bit. But I'm still staying with like a bit more colorful, pastel -y kind of palette. And the third palette that I'm bringing in is the Love Notes palette from Beauty Bay. Which is a beautiful kind of pastel, romantic leaning palette with a lot of pinks, purples. A few more neutral shades. But this is a bit of a bigger palette. But I'm excited to play around with this one. And again, it leans very springtime to me, and I'm excited to play with these tones a lot. So that's going to be the third palette that I'm bringing in. So that, you guys, was it for today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. I know this video has been quite a long one, I believe. I've been filming for almost 40 minutes. And so I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are, and I will catch you in my next one. Bye, guys.